He probably would have just said, let's go. Yeah. Well, let's go. Megan Fox is an American actress and one of the most beautiful women on the planet. She made her way to the top, but it's been a journey full of challenges and hardships, her childhood included. The attractive facade belies insecurities and past tragedies. We'll tell you all about it in our new video. I know this is a story that actually matters. Megan Fox, How the Transformers Star Lives and How Much She Earns Megan Denise Fox was born on May 16, 1986 in the U.S. town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Her father, Franklin Thomas Fox, was a parole officer and her mother, Gloria, changed several jobs but was mostly a stay-at-home mom. They also had an elder daughter, Christy Michelle Fox. The sisters have a 12-year age gap. By the way, now Christy works in the education system. Fox has English, German, Scottish, Irish, and French roots. Apart from that, legend has it that her great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother, Mary, came from the Native American tribe Powhatan. When Megan was three, her parents divorced. Soon, Gloria married Tony Tanasio, who was way older than her, and moved in with him in St. Petersburg, Florida. Tony turned out to be a domestic tyrant who verbally abused his stepdaughters and punished them for every little mistake. At the same time, the family was very religious. They attended every Sunday service and prayed before having a meal. The girls were forbidden to bring friends at home and dating was completely off the table. Megan went to a Catholic school where she felt like an outcast. Dancing was her safe space, she picked it up when she was five. The girl also went to a theater club and later on, she joined the school choir and the swimming team. Fox shared that the stage called her name ever since she was a child, she felt the need to be in the spotlight. That is why she would often put on performances for her family in the living room. When our hero was 13, she participated in several school and town talent shows, after which she tried modeling. She never doubted herself and believed that one day she would make it in the movie industry. But no one thought she was serious. Her mother would smirk and give her a condescending nod every time Megan told her she would become an actress. Her peers in St. Lucie West Centennial High School bullied her for her dream. For instance, a girl from her class wore a cat suit to a party. The girl looked awfully vulgar, and she was posing saying that she was portraying Megan Fox in the future. Everyone was ecstatic while Megan wanted to disappear. As the actress explained it, the problems lay in her ability to get along with boys, which would drive other girls mad. Megan was not afraid to stand up for herself and was rather aggressive. Girls from her class could throw ketchup at her or scatter her lunch around the cafeteria, so sometimes Fox had to hide from everyone in a bathroom stall. Megan shared that she had only one girlfriend in her life, as typically, girls don't like her. In her teen years, the future star worked in the Tropical Smoothie Restaurant. She danced around in a banana costume to attract customers. The costume was heavy and uncomfortable to wear, but the worst part about it was that it didn't cover the face. The establishment was located not far from the school, and her classmates were quick to come up with a new way to bully her. They would gather around Megan and laugh, pointing fingers at her while she kept dancing. When the girl was 15, she managed to get a small part in the family drama Holiday in the Sun, starring Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Fox portrayed a spoiled and conceited rich girl named Brianna Wallace, a rival of one of the main characters. Brianna, I really should get back to work. Is it important? It's my job. Look, as long as you're with me, you won't get into trouble. Meanwhile, Megan was caught shoplifting in a Walmart. She used to do it pretty often, but that time the security saw her pocket a lip gloss and stopped her when she was about to leave. Fox cried so hard that the shop staff decided not to call the police, but they banned her from the shop. Despite her parents placing a strict taboo on dating, when Megan was 15, she started to go out with a guy named Ben Leahy. The girl reminisces that he was cute but also a troublemaker, tall and perfectly built. She used to slip out of the house and lie on the grass looking at the stars. In the senior year of high school, Fox realized that she could make her living on her own, so she left home as soon as she could. She graduated from high school early to leave for Los Angeles. At first, she and Ben tried to make the long-distance relationship work, but eventually they broke up. Leahy said that Megan focused on her career and became too good for him. After that, Fox fell in love with a girl who worked at a strip club on Sunset Boulevard. Megan went all out to win the girl, giving her presents and asking her to leave the stripping business, but was rejected. 
Later, the celebrity revealed that she could see herself in a relationship with a woman, yet she didn't identify as a member of the queer community. In 2002, Fox was cast in the TV show Ocean Avenue. She appeared in 93 episodes in two years. In 2003, the aspiring actress appeared in the comedy action movie Bad Boys 2 and an episode of the teen TV show What I Like About You. A year later, her filmography was enriched with roles in the episodes of the TV shows Two and a Half Men and The Help, the comedy Crimes of Fashion, and the musical drama Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I like to be dead center. Me too, and I didn't think we had anything in common. I've earned the center seat. And besides, if you want to fit in, you probably shouldn't draw so much attention to yourself. In case you haven't noticed, I like the attention. Chill. During that time, the young woman dated the actor and model David Gallagher. They made a red carpet appearance together but broke up after one year of dating. This was also when the 18-year-old Fox got a role in the TV series Hope and Faith. Even though it wasn't a main role, she was a series regular. Does someone want to say goodbye to your father? Julie, do you want to say goodbye to my dad? <laughs> Julie says bye, dad. Maybe I should send Julie to college. She met Brian Austin Green on set, who was 13 years older. For her, it was love at first sight, and she felt the electricity the moment they accidentally touched. Green, in his turn, tried to stifle his feelings for Megan, but when she told him someone else asked her out, he cast all doubts aside. They started dating, and two years later, the couple announced their engagement. All this time, the actress continued working on the TV show and auditioned for the role of Lisa the Babysitter in the horror movie The Amityville Horror, which ended up going to Rachel Nichols. But the breakthrough moment was just around the corner as she scored the role of Michaela Baines in the blockbuster Transformers. Megan never hid that she got the gig because of her attractive appearance. Moreover, the director Michael Bay made her wash his Ferrari at the audition to see if she could be sexy. It looks like your, uh, your distributor cap's a little loose. Yeah? How'd you know that? Uh, my dad, he was, a, he was a real grease monkey. He taught me all about this. I could. Interestingly, the young woman lost two toenails because of the uncomfortable shoes she had to wear on set. And thanks to her, the end credits were accompanied by a Linkin Park song. One time, Megan went to their concert and was approached by the band after it, asking her to feature their song. Transformers premiered in 2007 and became a smash hit. Some sources say that Fox was paid $100,000 for the role. She was also nominated for an MTV Award for Breakthrough Performance. Apart from that, the actress voiced her character in the video game of the same name. In 2008, Megan appeared in the comedies Whore and How to Lose Friends and Alienate People. Congratulations on becoming incredibly famous, by the way. Thanks. What's that like? Weird. It's all happening so fast and it sort of feels like it has nothing to do with me. Fun fact, the director of the latter, Robert B. Whitey, was hoping he would be the one to introduce Megan Fox's talent to the world, but Transformers came out earlier, robbing him of that chance. In 2009, Megan and Brian unexpectedly called off the engagement. There were rumors that it happened because of a fling the young woman had with her Transformers co-star Shia LaBeouf. It wasn't until several years later that the actor confessed the rumors were true. He explained the onset affair with the fact that he has blurred lines between work and personal life. In the meantime, the second installment of the franchise about alien robots titled Transformers Revenge of the Fallen was released. Look at these wee tinge to it. You're such a little girl. We're gonna have 10 seconds of silence right now. I'm not talking to you for 10 seconds. You can't give me the silent treatment. You know what? I'm not talking to you for 10 seconds. You have three seconds left. Well, you know what? You can give me the silent treatment all you want, but you can't give me the talking. Wait, 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 wait. The actress had to imitate bike riding even though she didn't know how to do it. This is why, during the bike scenes, someone would push or catch the vehicle. Fox made $800,000 on the movie, and she already signed a contract to star in the third movie. This time, she would earn more than $2 million. However, she gave an interview during which she called Michael Bay Hitler. He demanded she gain 11 pounds and achieve a tan he would deem suitable. He's a nightmare to work for, Megan added. Surprisingly, Bay wasn't too hurt by her words. He said that the crew got used to her idiosyncrasies and no one paid attention to them anymore. But the studio demanded an apology, which the young woman refused to give. Looking back at it now, Fox admitted that she should have compromised, but she felt like Joan of Arc, which led her to hitting rock bottom in her career. The filming crew also published an open letter calling the actress dumb and ungrateful. The studio ended up breaking the contract with Megan. 
It is said that the franchise producer Steven Spielberg was the one who wanted to see Megan go, although he denies it. Soon after the second installment of the Transformers franchise and the video game of the same name came out, there was another premiere, the horror comedy Jennifer's Body. Fox was chosen among 7,000 candidates to play the main role of a cheerleader who got possessed by a demon. While preparing for the role, the actress lost almost 15 pounds and avoided sunlight for four months to keep her skin pale. The role brought her a Golden Raspberry nomination and an MTV nomination for Best WTF Moment. On top of that, she also took home two Teen Choice Awards for Choice Movie Actress, Horror Slash Thriller, and Choice Hottie, Female. According to some sources, she was paid $5 million for the movie. By the way, Fox says this is her favorite project. God, do you have to undermine everything that I do? You are such a player hater. You're a jerk. Wow, nice insult, Hannah Montana. You got any more harsh digs? The movie producers wanted to keep pumping money from Megan becoming a new sex symbol, so they came up with an idea. They wanted Megan to host an online chat on an adult website. But the director, Karen Kusama, was appalled by the idea and she didn't even tell Megan about it as she didn't want it to upset the actress. In 2010, Fox presented the drama film Passion Play and the fantasy western movie Jonah Hex, for which she was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award. Interestingly, at first, Megan turned down the role in the movie as she considered the script too violent and misogynistic. However, she changed her mind after Josh Brolin came on board and the script was rehashed. The actress also starred in the music video for Rihanna and Eminem's song, Love the Way You Lie. Since the music video contained scenes of domestic violence, Megan donated her salary to the Sojourn Women's Shelter in Los Angeles. That same year, she and Green got back together and eloped. On June 24, they got secretly married on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Their only witness was Brian's son from his first marriage, Cassius. On that day, Megan said that she was happy to be marrying her best friend and that she felt safe around him. In 2011, Fox voiced an episode of the animated TV show Robot Chicken and starred in the comedy Friends with Kids. Well, maybe, uh, maybe this drop-dead beautiful woman who owns the DAW will let you, let you say hi? Are you serious? You're gonna hit on me with a baby? That's, that's terrible. Boo. What's wrong with you? No, 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 no. A year later, she voiced another episode titled Robot Chicken at DC Comics Special. She also appeared in an episode of the TV show Wedding Band and starred in the comedies The Dictator and This Is 40. After that, the actress took a break from acting to spend some more time with her family as on September 27, 2012, she and Brian welcomed a son, Noah Shannon Green. A year later, she mended her relationship with Michael Bay and got a role in his new production project titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The shooting of the superhero project had barely started when Megan found out she was pregnant with her second child. They had to make some alterations in her character's costume to hide the growing bump and delete or rewrite all the fight scenes. On February 12, 2014, she gave birth to a son, Bodie Ransom. Seven weeks after giving birth, she came back to the set to finish filming her scenes for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The movie premiered in August 2014 and did pretty well at the box office, but the critical reviews were berating. Fox got the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Supporting Actress. Here, Ninja Mutant Turtle Teenagers. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds ridiculous. The sequel came out two years later. It also received negative reviews and our hero got one more Golden Raspberry nomination. Soon after that, on August 4, 2016, she and Green welcomed their third child together, a son they named Journey River. It's interesting that the happy event happened after another breakup. Megan didn't live with her husband and barely spoke to him for several months. There were allegations that Brian got jealous of Megan gaining more popularity while his career almost came to a standstill. During that time, the actress got a role in the TV show New Girl, appearing in 15 episodes. She was supposedly paid around $10,000 per episode. In 2017, she teased the Transformers fans, alluding to her character coming back, which still hasn't happened. At the end of 2018, our hero released the documentary series Legends of the Lost with Megan Fox, which she scripted. There are four episodes about female warriors, Stonehenge, America's Lost Civilizations, and the Trojan War. The girl has been interested in ancient cultures for a long time, and if acting hadn't worked out, she would have become an archaeologist. 
She visited an archaeological site when she was a schoolgirl, and she thought this job was amazing. After a short break, Megan came back to the big screens with the fantasy drama Shadow Girl. The movie had a limited theatrical release and didn't become a pop hit, although critics were rather positive about it. No, <clears throat> he was a producer. And no, that was a long time ago. So who's the lucky guy? Who says there's only one? <laughs> Right after that, Fox appeared in the South Korean war movie Battle of Jongsari. She portrayed an American reporter who relayed the events of the Korean War. That same year, James Franco presented the dramedy Zeroville featuring Megan. Fun fact, filming started back in October 2014, but the long production process ended up in failure. Critics absolutely destroyed the directorial work and the movie didn't even gross $80,000. What movies are you in? Nothing important. Just a few European movies. I'm sure they're very good movies. In 2020, the actress starred in the action movie Road. She also played the mother of a gifted child who learned to read the mind of his dog in the family movie Think Like a Dog. Hey, do you remember that time Ollie was riding his bike and he, he fell off and he banged up his knee? Yeah, you know what he said? He was like, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> During that time, news broke out that Megan and her husband separated. In an interview, she confessed that she felt trapped in her marriage as she let other people make decisions for her. Fox promised herself that she would not live in fear another day and turned her life around. She got a divorce, started working more, and doing different hobbies. Megan and Brian had no prenup when they got married, but experts say that they could sign a contract after that. This step allowed both of them to protect their assets. Their divorce was finalized in October 2021 when Megan was already dating Colson Baker, also known as Machine Gun Kelly. Megan shared that they'd known each other for several years, but on their first encounter, they literally didn't see each other. The girl couldn't get a good look at the face of the tall blonde guy. After they met for the second time, she knew at once they would be together. They kept things slow, spoke on the phone for hours, and went on platonic dates. During that time, Megan also appeared in two music videos for the musician's songs Drunk Face and Bloody Valentine. In 2021, the actress appeared in the horror movie Night Team and thrillers Till Death and Midnight in the Switchgrass. The latter earned her one more Golden Raspberry nomination. My biggest target is lined up for tonight. I'm tired of having this conversation. I'm doing that thing tonight. Bullshit. Watch me. In January 2022, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan announced that he proposed to his love. The engagement ring is far from ordinary. It's covered with thorns, and if the woman wants to take it off, it'll hurt. Love is pain, explained the artist. Later that year, Fox appeared in the black comedy Big Gold Brick and co-starred with her fiancé in the drama Taurus, which he also co-wrote. After that, Machine Gun Kelly released his directorial project, the comedy Good Morning. So my brand new house? It's flooded. That's why I'm in this hotel room with all these people who I tried to escape. Thank God it wasn't me for once. The plot was inspired by the story of Megan sending a text to a guy who mistook it for a breakup text. In 2023, the filmography of the celebrity was enriched with an episode of the comedy TV show Dave as well as the action movies Johnny and Clyde and Expendables 4. She played Gina, an ex-CIA agent and ex-girlfriend of Jason Statham's character in the latest installment of Sylvester Stallone's franchise. Oh, you, don't? you don't want competition. Uh, Gina, That's Gina, Gina calm, please calm down. Oh, me calm down? Did you just tell me? Don't tell me to call. I've never been more calm in my life. In 2020, Besides that, Megan released her poetry collection titled Pretty Boys Are Poisonous. In her book, she shared that she and her current partner went through a miscarriage when she was 10 weeks into pregnancy, and it had a huge impact on their relationship. Fox also revealed that she had an ectopic pregnancy a few years before that. It was a traumatizing experience full of grief, and she had to cope with her loved ones mistreating her. Although Megan leaves an impression of a confident, gorgeous woman, she was diagnosed with body dysmorphia, a mental condition where a person fixates on every little flaw or unique feature of their body. She's very insecure and hates herself for that. Apart from that, she was diagnosed with ADHD, 
when she was a kid. She also struggles with obsessive compulsive disorder which manifests itself in intrusive thoughts and actions. In addition to that, she has a condition that makes her thumbs short. The actress admits that although she strived for attention all childhood, once she got really famous, she realized that she prefers solitude. When asked what superpowers she'd want to have, Fox answered that she'd like to be invisible. She's more comfortable spending time alone at home and not talking to anyone rather than attending red carpet events. Megan has other phobias. She has a peculiar way of dealing with her fear of flight. She listens to Britney Spears songs. She's certain that she's not destined to die while listening to her albums. She also has a fear of darkness and dry paper. She has to lick her fingers or wet them with water while flipping through a script, a newspaper, or anything that isn't laminated. Apart from that, the actress is a germaphobe, so she brings her own silverware to restaurants. She uses shopping as a coping mechanism to deal with stress. She can even call herself a shopping addict as she often orders everything she lays her eyes on online. But she prefers simple t-shirts and jeans to glamorous evening gowns. Megan also goes to therapy and she is open about it in interviews. The celebrity has several tattoos, including some symbols on her fingers, a hieroglyph on her neck, the yin-yang symbol on the wrist, and some quotes. For instance, she has a quote from King Lear, We will all laugh at gilded butterflies. A Nietzsche quote, and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. She also has a tattoo of a poem that she wrote. There once was a little girl who never knew love until a boy broke her heart. Fox used to have a Marilyn Monroe portrait on the forearm, but she removed it. Megan has another tattoo dedicated to her new lover, the words El Pistolero, which means gunman. Fox shares that sometimes she scatters her clothes around the house. She hates to do the dishes and cook for herself, but when it comes to her loved ones and kids, she can make pancakes, bake buns, or a pie at any time. The celebrity is a huge fan of comic books, video games, and Star Trek and Star Wars franchises. Her favorite music bands are Nirvana and Motley Crue. The actress aspires to become a director one day. As of now, she has two projects in the works. The animated movie Naya Legend of the Golden Dolphin, where she voices Princess Leilani, and the fantasy thriller Subservience. Fox's net worth is estimated at $8 million. She usually does no more than two movies a year, allegedly making her annual income around $1 million. The actress makes money not only filming in movies and voicing video games, but also appearing in commercials. She was the face of ad campaigns for brands such as Avon and Motorola, and the Emporio Armani collaboration earned her about $1 million. Other brands that Megan teamed up with were the lingerie brand Fredericks Hollywood, home electronic shop Sharper Image, watches and accessories brand Lotus, and nail polish brand Undone Lacquer, founded by her current fiancé. One time, our hero was a muse of Brahma beer during the Rio Carnival. In 2023, she announced she would eulogize the best deaths in the online video game Diablo 4. Megan spends her money on charity as well. Together with her ex-husband, they supported the Generosity Water Organization and funded the building of more than 10 wells. The actress loves animals, so she speaks up for animal rights and is a convinced environmentalist. Apart from that, she's taken part in numerous fundraiser auctions, supporting seriously ill children and cancer research. In 2009, Megan Fox and Brian Austin Green purchased a house in Los Feliz, a Los Angeles neighborhood, for $2.95 million. The four-bedroom house has a kitchen, a dining room, a living room with a fireplace, and a media room. It has a wonderful city view and there's a swimming pool in the backyard. In 2014, the celebrity sold it for $3.75 million. The ex-couple had two more houses in Los Angeles. They purchased one of them in 2012 for $900,000. They added the second house in Toluca Lake to their collection in 2014 for $3.34 million. The four-bedroom, 6,600-square-foot house has a spacious living room with a fireplace, a modern kitchen, and a playroom. There's also a swimming pool in the backyard. Fox and Green sold both property items in 2015 and 2016 for $1.3 million and $2.6 million, respectively. In 2016, the actors bought a Malibu mansion for $3.3 million, but they had a mold issue. Megan sued the agent who facilitated the transaction and didn't tell them about the problem. Three years later, the case was settled. The celebrity received $100,000 in compensation instead of the $5 million she asked for. In 2023, she finally sold the high-maintenance house, making $4.5 million on the deal. By the way, this is not the only unfortunate incident that happened to Fox. In the late 2000s, 
she and Green were robbed by a group of teenagers. They got in through the unlocked back door and took the actress's clothes as well as Brian's watch and gun. Interestingly, the couple had no idea about what happened until the gun was found at the house of one of the burglars. Megan and Machine Gun Kelly rented a house in Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles for $30,000 per month. On the premises, there's a swimming pool, a sports ground, and a lounge area equipped with deck chairs. On the rooftop of the additional building, there's a lawn. In 2022, word got out that Megan's fiancé bought an Encino mansion for $7.5 million. The 1970s building was renovated, and now it's a fusion of the country and contemporary styles. The mansion features a game room with a pool table, a wine cellar, a spacious closet, a living room with backyard access, and a swimming pool with several lounge areas on the site. The car fleet of the star includes several Mercedes models, G63 AMG, CLS 55 AMG, and G550, two BMWs, a BMW Series 5, and an X5, a couple of Range Rovers, a Snow White Tesla Model X, and an Aston Martin DB11. What do you think of Megan Fox? You know what? I'm just, uh, I'm gonna walk. Uh, good luck with your car. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.